Hello everyone, this is Sergeant274, and welcome to my beginner's guide for Dark Souls 2. Now, I realize this is probably a few months too late, because there are tons of other uh, guides out there on YouTube made by some wonderful people and excellent uh, experts at this game. I am not necessarily one of those, but I enjoy making the videos, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make this series. This series will not be an all-inclusive walkthrough where I pick up every little item along the way. This is just going to be hitting uh, the main items that a beginner would want to get and how to get through those certain areas. Um, also, I'm going to be playing this offline just because um, I, I don't want to get invaded, even though it is a big part of the game. And a lot of the messages uh, that may be in my world and that would help me probably will not be in yours um, unless you play at the same time on like one of the same uh, servers or whatever. I don't even know. Whatever. But I'm going to be playing offline. Uh, that also... But if you're a new player, you may want to play online because... If you need help in certain areas, you can summon. You can also summon for boss fights. Although Dark Souls 2 Offline uh, does allow you to summon NPCs for some certain boss fights. And I'll go over that uh, when we get to that point. But for the most part, Dark Souls 2, you don't really need to summon. But if you're a beginner, it definitely does help in some of the fights. So <coughs> don't feel ashamed at all to play Offline and to summon. If you don't want to get invaded. And uh, regardless... Dark Souls 2, you will get invaded, by the way, even if you play offline, because there are, spoiler, NPCs that will invade you, even in offline mode. So, you still get some of that um, experience. Um, I'm not in condoning playing in offline mode, because I think online mode is kind of where it's at, because you get to share experiences, you get to see other people's phantoms, you get that interaction. Um, and also, new game which is the first game you play, there really isn't a lot of invading going on. It's not really until New Game Plus, which is more geared towards PvP and a lot of invasions and stuff like that, um, where you run into that those sorts of uh, gameplay elements. All right. Also, I don't claim to be the best player at this game. By no means am I. If you've seen any of my videos on this, you know I am not. This is just my kind of interpretation of uh, how a beginner might find success um, in this game. Uh, also, you do not have need to you do not need to have played uh, Demon Souls or the original Dark Souls in order to pick up Dark Souls 2 here uh, and feel comfortable and uh, have success. All right. So, having stated all that, let us press start here. This is, by the way, on the PC. Um, so, uh, like I said, I know this is a little bit late here. But you can see that Calibration 1.08, that is the new patch, which has come out. Um, and it's nerfed some things, it's, you know, corrected some things, it's, you know, tried to balance everything. Um, also, DLC has come out and there's more in the future, so hopefully that'll draw some more people into the Souls gaming experience. Uh, especially Dark Souls 2. I, I really enjoy Dark Souls, I enjoy Demon Souls, and... Uh, I played Dark Souls 2 on the PS3 when it came out and on the PC when it came out and honestly I got burnt out because I played it so much. But now I've just recently started getting back into it so I thought, you know what, it's fun again for now. So while it's fun for me, let's make a video for beginners. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to hit new game here. And uh, we are not, I'm not going to show you any of the cutscenes. I'm going to skip all the pork here and um, you know, let you guys experience that for yourselves. Because I'm assuming if you're watching this video, either you are interested in the game, or you have the game and haven't played it yet, or you have the game, played it, and uh, haven't had much success, which is very understandable for a Souls game. So <laughs> there's nothing nothing wrong or nothing ashamed. Um, don't be ashamed of uh, dying. Actually, if you die, first time you die you actually get an achievement or a trophy for that so all right anyways you start out with things betwixt whenever you follow the light that's basically what you do the only thing over here is a guaranteed plummet to your death so there's there's no point in lingering around there unless you want to look through the controls over here you see lots of skeletons that skeleton uh, will be you if you stick around here too long and let these little dogs or whatever they are I don't even know what they are I don't even know where they are. See, like those guys. Monkey, dog, things from the Wizard of Oz. I don't know. If you stay around here too long, they will get, they will gang up on you and uh, kill you. So, yeah, that's probably not 
um, the recommended course of action. There's your destination. Now, if you're an explorer type, you'll realize, hey, look at this. I found a path. Oh, God, there are huge footprints along this path. That usually means danger. Yes, there's a huge troll here. There's an item over there. That item is not worth going over there and risking your uh, life for. Although, you just started out in the game. You haven't even really created your character. This is who you are, okay, for now. Um, you could go over there because dying, I mean, really, what's it going to do? You're not losing anything. You have zero souls. Um, so you could go over there, pick up the item, or you could sit here for too long and uh, watch him do that. So I'm going to come over here, pick up the item. It's gold pine resin, and I'm going to run. And like I said, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I really rarely ever use gold pine resin. He can't come through here, by the way. Um, so you can do that. Even if you die, you just start right back at things betwixt. So you can either do that again or until you get... Actually, what you could do is just run over there, grab the item, and even if it kills you, who cares? You got the item. Uh, you can kill him, by the way, and you get a ring for it, but it's very difficult to do at this stage. Probably want to wait till you have a weapon other than your fist. Alright, once you come down here, you'll see you came down a ledge. Before going over there, you can kind of button hook the corner here. Come down to the waterfall, and behind the waterfall, find a small, smooth, and silky stone. Uh, we'll be using that very shortly actually um, you give that to the crow that is in the tutorial section here or the beginning section after the hut and uh, they give you an item for stones like that you leave them there and uh, they'll give you something in return which we'll see shortly all right let's go through here you'll meet the fire keepers and then you'll try to recall your name all right I always play female characters for the most part. I, I don't know. It's just what I like. So I'm gonna go for uh, Final Fantasy 9 and go with Beatrix. And I'm going to select OK. And we will be Beatrix. You can change your sex later too. Don't, don't worry. Okay, yes. I know my own name. Alright, really quickly, going through the uh, classes and the gifts. Uh, classes. Warrior. And you can kind of see the stats down here that a warrior has. Um, this is... It doesn't really tell you. Alright, here we go. So this is overall level. That doesn't matter. If you're a beginner, don't even try to min-max. It doesn't matter. Once you get over level 150, everything kind of equals out anyways for the most part. More so around 160, 170, but hey, whatever. Who's counting at that point, right? Alright. So these numbers real quick. The heart down here. It's a vigor. There you go. It determines uh, how many hit points you have. The next stat <laughs> going to the right on the top row is Endurance. It determines your overall stamina. This number really tops out at 20 uh, once we start leveling up. And then every point you put into it after 20, it only gains one point. So, I mean, if you wanted to pump it, you're more than free to. But uh, uh, we'll probably only pump it up to 20 because we'll uh, find better uh, allocation for our points um, after that. Uh, vitality is your equipment load. How uh, vitality actually affects uh, how far and fast you can roll. Um, so that's kind of important to have. Uh, that along with, um, what do you call it? Well, adaptability. So attunement for a spellcaster. Obviously, how many spells you can uh, attune or equip. And then the bottom row, left to right, strength. Uh, you know, influences your uh, capacity to do damage with a strength scaling weapon or your ability to even use one uh, because of the requirement and the same with the shield. Uh, dex, same way, just for a dex weapon. Uh, adaptability here, boosts your agility and various other resistances. This here is good only because, well not only because, uh, but when you use healing items and things like that, the higher your adaptability, or well, the higher your agility, 
um, the more quickly you do that, and that comes in handy, trust me. Intelligence is for a magic caster, sorcerer. Faith is for uh, your cleric who sh uses miracles. Uh, and then there's also dark in this game, uh, which is a combination of intelligence and faith. So you kind of want to scale those uh, along with each other if you're going to do a dark build or hex build. Um, although you'll see some hexes require more intelligence and some require more faith. So depending on what you want to do, uh, you'll have to raise one a little bit more than the other. But it scales with the lowest one. So, anyways. Alright. You have Warrior right there. Who starts with 15 strength and 11 dex. You have the Knight. You have a Swordsman. These two are kind of the same, honestly. Uh, so is a Bandit, as you'll see in a second. Swordsman starts off with... Um, well, two swords. And they're, they're slightly upgraded. Which isn't bad. Excuse me, I'm yawning. Forgive me. <laughs> First video in here, I am yawning already. It's, it's late at night. Actually, early in the morning. Alright, uh, Bandit is the Dex character. Uh, at least starting off with. You can see there only has one intelligence, but eight faith. Uh, Cleric is your faith character. Sorcerer, your intelligence build. Explorer just... Yeah, kind of starts off with a bunch of stuff. I guess that's one of the reasons, too. Get an explorer. Starts off with a hat that increases item discovery too. Deprive starts off with completely nothing, just sixes all around. For a beginner, which is what this video is geared towards, I would highly recommend the warrior because you can use a lot of the weapons uh, that you acquire early in the game. Or, I guess the bandit isn't bad either if you don't plan on using magic. If you plan on using magic, uh, the bandit is actually still a very good uh, choice if you're going for a cleric build. However, a cleric does start with the uh, heal miracle, so that would also be helpful if you're going down that path. Um, but choose whatever. Like I said, you're definitely not locked into any of this. The only thing you're locked into is your base beginning stats. You can't go below those. So what I'm going to do is I recommend a warrior here. So I'm just going to pick a warrior. The gifts here, nothing obviously is, well, what it says, nothing. Lifering grants you a little bit, I stress a little bit, of extra HP. The effigy is, uh, you'll get quite a few of those throughout the game. It, it, it returns you to... Uh, when you die, it restores all your health and makes you human. Uh, healing wares, I wouldn't worry about those, honestly. Homeward Bone, we'll get tons of those. Seed of a Tree of Giants, not useful, honestly. It's just a uh, one-use item for uh, if you're invaded. Um, a bonfire Aesthetic actually could be useful if you wanted to... Um, get a couple items that were only available in New Game Plus early on. Uh, like the butterfly stuff and uh, is it the butterfly stuff? Maybe Imajula there. And I have to do it once or twice. But you can choose this. It just resets the bonfire that you use it at to uh, the next new game. So if you use a new game, that those enemies or that area would become new game plus. What we're going to do is take the petrified something here. Because that's another thing you can give to the crows. Um... Like the sm small, smooth, and silky stone we got. And uh, hopefully get something for it. So there we go. Um, I'm going to be a chick since I am Beatrice. And I will make my girl. And I'll see you back here in a minute. And we'll continue on uh, to Majula. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I made Beatrix there. Um, so once we are done. We press... Done. Start. That's my true self. Yes. And then she says that. And now if you pre-ordered the game, you get all this good stuff here. Um, I'm assuming if you're new to the game, you probably don't. You see down there, the last thing we got, the Dragon Talent. That's for the DLC. I also have the, uh, the Season Pass, so I have the Crown of Sunken King DLC already. 
So, first thing we're going to do... Whoa. Whoa. We're a little quick, aren't we? Wow. Okay. <laughs> first thing we're going to do is I'm going to remove this foolish, foolish helmet. Um, and somehow I have auto run on. Look at that up there. I have no idea how to get that off. <laughs> I must have pressed the button or something and um, selected auto run. So, let me figure out while on screen how the heck do you get that off uh key bindings jump where is oh my gosh why will you not let me see auto dash x all right i just pressed x there you go if for some reason you have auto dash on you're playing in the PC, X turns it on and off. Okay, there you go. That's better. All right, first thing we're going to do is come up here, open this chest, and get ourselves a human effigy. All right, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, you can see the starting equipment is not very good. You get a broken sword, which is great, and a P Well, I guess it's now crappy shield but it's not the best shield so we need to get ourselves some new clothing uh soon too whatever so come over here light the bonfire you don't have to rest at a bonfire like you did in dark souls uh the original dark souls in order to uh um be considered or that to be considered the last bonfire uh, that you rested at or whatever uh so you don't have to rest and respawn the enemies in order to uh, respawn there. Alright, so after breaking that, you come through here, and I'll let you guys do all these fog gates. But our goal is to go in this first one here, so we can drop that ladder down, because at the top of that ladder is where those crows are. So we're going to enter the first mist here. And again, if you're new to this series, I would highly recommend going through the the uh, areas here because it teaches you kind of how to attack and gives you some enemies here. I'm going to two-hand it by pressing triangle um, and just R1 these guys. And they really don't attack that much. <laughs> this guy up here is hiding on your left. There you can see the the one-handed R1 actually kills him in three shots, so there's really no point in two-handing at that point. Uh, here, you want to backstab him. He has no idea where you are. You're actually dressed very similarly to him. Uh, so we're just going to walk up behind him and press R1. And he's been backstabbed. If you want to light a torch, you can. And, and light all these little pillars here. There's not really need for it. Here we pick up a dagger, which is actually probably is it going to do more damage? That does a hundred damage even. Uh, the dagger does e90. Uh, so it doesn't do as much damage as a broken straight sword. I'm not going to use this stuff because a lot of you guys probably won't even have it. Um, but it is better for critical attacks. So. Actually, this guy's facing us. He's an archer. So we're going to roll... Well, he had homing super arrow there, apparently, and decided to hit us even though we were rolling next to him on the ground. Uh, this guy comes from over here. Again, don't worry about it. Uh, you can see there, life gems, they heal you gradually. We don't have our Estus flasks yet. And it, rolling in this game is a key. I like rolling better. Uh, and you can come back here. <laughs> Let's walk right behind him and backstab him. And pick up your little item over here. And he didn't die from a backstab? Wow. Okay. First boss of the game right there, the archer, baby. Okay. So now this is where we want to be. Make sure you kick the ladder. And then these are the crows. 
And what we're going to do is press start, go into our inventory, and remember that small or smooth and silky stone. We're going to leave it. Then we're also going to go to petrified something and leave that. You can leave multiple items. And they'll say, yeah, they'll give you a little feedback. And you'll pick up a cracked blue eye orb, which sucks for us. And twinkling titanite. Yay. You can get, uh... You can get a, a strength weapon, the demon's great axe, I believe, or great hammer, and you can also get an old whip, and then a, a couple other things. Well, actually, quite a few other things. I was hoping for one of the weapons. We didn't get it. Not a big deal. If you can get to Chandler's trident too. Anyway, drop down, get the soul. If you want to go through the rest of these, uh, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to. Uh, because I don't need the tutorial. We just want to get to the good bits of the game. <sighs> Which are through this hallway where there's nothing in. Or nothing in. There's nothing in here that's uh, it's useful. Now coming out here we're going to find something that is going to be useful. You can see over... Is this it here? No. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> right here. Um, well, first, before you do that, run over here. You can pick up a Divine Blessing. I never use Divine Blessings because, yeah, they're just too good to use. <laughs> but uh, they basically restore all status ailments and uh, your health. So, But anyways, come over here. There's a break in the rock, so jump down. Don't go too fast or you'll roll right off. Jump down there and you'll see a little pathway here. Jump down, turn around, and we pick up a morning star and a chime. The chime is useful, or it's used for um, casting miracles. So what we're going to do is, you can see we have 100 damage there. We got the morning star, which increases our damage to 110 and then plus scaling, it gives 34. So that's 144 damage right there. Plus it has a bleed there at the bottom. So. This is a far better weapon than uh, what we came, or than that sword. Um, also, if you're deprived, you can pick that up, and uh, I think you can use it, actually. Alright, so here we are, Majula. And we're going to explore this area real quick before we go into the main area of the game. Every time you're at Bonfire, there you go. You get healed back up, and your uh, equipment durability... Um, is reset So we want to come over here first thing you want to do after lighting the bonfire and potentially resting there is talk to this chick She will talk and give you whoa So she will give you the um, what do you call it there? Uh, the Estus flask which you have to equip now I always equip it number one But uh, go in there and equip that Estus flask because that's gonna be important. That's your main uh, source of healing and she's the only person that can give it to you, so don't miss her. Second person you want to talk to is this person up here. Just go through his dialogue. He'll tell you a lot about the area and kind of where to go or uh, where you can go and what's out there. Um, but after you exhaust his dialogue, eventually he'll ask you to join the Covenant, which is the Way of the Blue. Now, you may not want to, but I'm going to do it because once you join you get a ring, and the ring actually allows you to, um... That is what people let. Well, the, when you equip the ring, it gives you a little more health. Also, if you talk to him, you can learn a gesture. If you learn all gestures, there's an achievement for that, too. So, we're gonna leave. And we are going to equip that ring he gave us, which is the blue seal. And you can see, uh, at the top right there... It increases our total hit points by what is that 24 so it's not a lot but it's it's you know it's a free ring so might as well take it <laughs> by the way what the this covenant does is uh, if you're invaded online the uh, they will send a player into your world to fight off the invader um, I that's actually happened to me in my first playthrough I believe um, way back when. 
but that's how that works. So if you're playing online and you don't like being invaded, uh, join this covenant and uh, wear the ring. And if you're invaded, uh, someone from another covenant will come and defend you. All right. Next thing to do is pick up the free items over here. Over here, you find some life gems and a soul, which is helpful. This guy here is a blacksmith, but he can't get in, so you can talk to him. Well, you can try to unlock the door, but you can't get in. So uh, that's going to be one of our first priorities, is to get the key for that, so we have a blacksmith. Um, second thing we want to do is we're just hugging the right here. Uh, is go up here and we get some items which will be useful and they are the homeward bone which allows you to return to the last bonfire you rested at this here is also a covenant but um, we're not going to join it that makes everything harder basically <laughs> so I would not advise joining that uh, let's see, there's an item in here. One life gem. Uh, there's a kitty cat in here you can talk to. Shaliloquoi, or I forget her name. What's her name? There we go. Shalquar, sorry. There you go, and you can learn about the well, not really learn about the covenants, but you can see um, what covenant you belong to in your current rank in that covenant. You could also ban in your covenant. You can buy some stuff. Two rings here stand out. This ring right here, which reduces fall damage. It's very important eventually. And then the uh, ring of whispers uh, can come in handy later. She also sells homeward bones and some other items, which I never get. No, it doesn't. Now you want to, now over here, you see this well? Knock this boulder with your weapon into the well and pops up. And that's this flash shard. So that will give us uh, as soon as we turn it into the Emerald Herald over there, uh, two Estus flasks instead of one. Now there are piggies back here. I wouldn't advise killing them because they don't give many souls and they're kind of tough this early on in the game. This door here is locked. This is another priority. We want to get in there. You can see the pigs are already starting to follow me, I think. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, another thing we can do is come in here, and this is a merchant. Uh, he sells, for now, uh, nothing too great here. Uh, silver Kite Shield is okay. The Twin Dragon Great Shield is actually pretty good. Um, so we're probably going to want to do that, especially for a beginner. A good shield is very valuable. And he sells other stuff here. And the pigs found me. So we're going to climb up here. And get this little tantalizing treasure. This is a titanite shard. Allows us to upgrade equipment. We're going to hop down here. Let those pigs do their thing. Uh, there's nothing up there. And if we go up here... This is actually the first area we're going to go to. This is kind of where we came from. Um, I already got that item. <laughs> it's funny. Um, let's just go pick this up right now. If you come through here, come through a little, I don't know what you want to call this. It's not really a tunnel. Kind of a, um, yeah, I don't know what you would call this. I don't know, path. We'll call it a path. How's that? And you see this guy over here. This is Benhart. He's not going to be able to do anything right now. And we're not going to be able to do anything right now. But you can talk to him. And he talks about there's a statue up there. Uh, we can't do anything with a statue right now. But we come over here. And we get the life gem. A homeward bone. And then, yeah. That's, that's just nice. A couple free items. You can come in here. There are a couple enemies. I don't think there's... There might be an item. No, there's no item. Uh, eventually, we have to get through this gate. And the only way to do it is by... Uh, turning a statue into life. Which we'll do later. So, 
All right, that's pretty much all there is to do here uh, initially in Majula. There's a few other things that you can maybe, I don't know, dabble in. But nothing, nothing major there. Just It would just be acquiring a couple items. Uh, but we're going to do that anyways once we go uh, to the Forest of the Fallen Giants or um, Hides, Hides, Hides Tower of Flame. The Tower of Flame. All right. Anyways, uh, next video, I will meet you back here and we will continue on um, and progress. So thanks for watching. And I'm sure all you beginners have made it this far. <laughs> all right, goodbye.